What is up, everybody? Jay Nell here with my UFC 179 recap video. Let's get into it. I hope you saw it. It was a good event. I got three out of five, and I was nervous. I lost my first two, so I was really nervous. First up, I chose Diego Ferreira to beat Benel Darush. He did not. This was a unanimous decision in favor of Darush, and I totally agree. First round was really close, back and forth. Diego was landing a lot of shots on the feet. Uh, Darush was able to take him down, ground and pound. Uh, Diego went for a leg submission, which did not really work, so he ended up eating a lot of shots there. That's the danger with leg submissions. Second and third round pretty much went the same way, but uh, Darush was able to take him down and basically smother him with offense, have him his weight constantly on Diego, whether on against the fence or on the ground. Diego looked tired in the second round, so I kind of knew it was, mm, uh, and I was right. <laughs> Unanimous decision in favor of Benel Darush. Who would you like to see him fight next? Next up, I lost this pick as well. I picked Lucas Martins to beat Darren Elkins. He did not. I knew this would be close because Darren's so scrappy, cardio, and he's hard to put away, which proved to serve him well. First round, he kind of overwhelmed Lucas with offense. Whether he was even landing clean shots, he was always throwing them. Whether he was landing takedowns, he was always going for them. And this really disrupted Lucas. Lucas was kind of, he didn't look comfortable at all. So the first round went to Darren for sure. Second round went to Lucas. He found his footing, found his rhythm, and started tagging him. Tagging him. Hard shots, busted it up, him open, bumps and bruises, bleeding under both eyes, swelling. He really started to tag him. Won that second round. Third round, really close. Again, uh, Lucas needs to get some ring awareness. He needs to be able to feel where his back is at. Because every time he got close to the fence, I was like, move! Circle out! lateral move because as soon as he got close to the cage Darren would uh, go in for a takedown which he wouldn't get but he would successfully get him up against the fence and he would hold him there the ref several times in the third round had to restart the fight in, in space so he needs to get better ring awareness this was a split decision in favor of Darren and it just depends on what you were looking at as judges so I can't really say I disagree who would you like to see both these men fight next, especially Darren Elkins, the winner? Next up, we had the co or excuse me, Fabio Maldonado versus Hans Stringen. I was nervous because I picked Fabio. Nervous because in the first round, Hans was able to take him down, ground and pound him, hold him there the whole time. It looked like Fabio couldn't get up. Second round, same thing. Took him down, ground and pound, got nervous. Hans made a mistake and it was uh, Fabio was able to capitalize and get the top position. And he had him pinned up against the fence and started dropping bombs. Body shots head shots and even though some of the shots didn't look hard Fabio is a power puncher and so they're much harder than they look every shot was busting him up bloody bumps and bruises total face red refs refs stopped the fight good stoppage in the second round who would you like to see Fabio Maldonado fight next at the end of the fight he jumped up on the uh, fence there straddling the cage called Anderson Silva up there they hugged it out because they had a little, a little bit of a drama in-house issue Fabio spoke to the media about it probably shouldn't have he even admitted that he said he probably shouldn't have they hugged it out talked it out they're good so it was a nice little moment next up co-main event I was nervous about this one but I'm glad I chose Phil Davis because he dominated Glover to share all three rounds. Glover did not look like himself. I don't want to take anything away from Phil. He looked very strong. I said it depends on where this fight takes place. Standing up or on the ground, it took place where Phil wanted it to. He out-wrestled him. Ground and pound, good shots. He stayed active. He was going for the finish, constantly going for a finish. He just couldn't finish Glover. Glover is very hard to finish, very strong. Although he wasn't as strong as normal. He didn't look as fit as normal. looked kind of soft around the midsection. His arms didn't look as big or defined. He wasn't as fast, even though he's not a very fast guy. He just didn't look as fast as he normally is. He's in the middle of opening a gym right now. Also, we know he took that loss to John Jones pretty hard. So he just didn't look like himself. He just didn't. Who would you like to see both these men fight next, especially Phil Davis? Now, main event. And I got this pick and I chose my boy, Jose Aldo. I didn't lose hope. I was hoping that the situation with his good friend Henning losing with all of these reigns ending with Anderson Silva and GSP giving up his belt with all of the Conor McGregor talk. I was hoping that this situation would light a fire in Jose. We would see, you know, just him on. And I think it did. I think we saw him. He was oh, back to his foul. He's so fast. Because Chad is fast. Chad Mendez, by the way, is fighting Chad Mendez. Chad is fast. Chad looked great. Okay, Chad. This was four rounds longer than the last fight, y'all. This was very competitive. This was a great fight. Five round, uh, unanimous decision in favor of Jose. I believe um, Jose won more rounds. I, I agree with the decision. I think they probably landed around the same amount of shots. It's just that Jose landed harder shots and he landed cleaner. 
he landed cleaner, harder shots. He he did. Um, Jose, he had some scar tissue there. He opened him up. Chad opened him up. Both men were bloody. There was a moment at the end of the first round. This first round was spectacular. It was awesome. <laughs> had us all on our feet at the bar. Uh, at the end of the first round, uh, Jose threw a two-piece. And that second shot landed pretty much after the bell. And almost took Chad out. Almost. I was like, oh my gosh, not again. Not again. Um... Second round was much, much closer. Jose definitely won the first. Second round was much closer. Probably could have went either way. Third round, I believe Jose won again. Chad got some takedowns, but Jose was able to pop right back up. His cardio looked good. He was even going for some knees, some flying knees again. Shades of old Jose. Like I said, I think the fire was lit. He was on, and Chad was on too. Very uh, confident. He brought the fire. He brought it to him, which is why this fight was so good. And it was close. Um, fourth round went to Chad. Went to Chad, and it was clearly went to Chad. He was able to land more shots. He was able to control the tempo more. I think that's the round where he landed more takedowns. He definitely won that fourth. Fifth round, very, very close. Very, very close. I think Jose probably just eked out the fifth round by, again, he had a nice jab there, was landing cleaner, harder shots. There was a moment where he uh, landed, uh, no, Chad landed a two-piece, stunned Jose, and then in the midst of that, Jose landed a, a right, stunned Chad, and everybody's like, why isn't he capitalizing? Why isn't he capitalizing? I'm like, because he's still hurt. They're both hurt. So it just, it was a very exciting fight. They won fight the night, of course, and um, Jose won. Of course, Conor McGregor is fighting uh, Seaver next. We have Cub Swanson and, and uh, Frankie Edgar. Jose knows the talk is out there about Conor McGregor. We all know what's going on there. Who would you like to see both of these men fight next? Let me know any injury updates. Let me know how you did with your picks. Take care. Talk to me. Goodbye.